Welcome to this tutorial. My name is Ian and I'm going to be taking you through the tutorial. So, so far in our tutorials, we've been focused on creating tables of data. But in this one, we're going to be looking at how we can create graphical visualizations of that data. So we're going to be looking at how do we create a column graph or a line graph or a pie graph. So we're going to be asking ChatGPT to be able to create those for us. We're going to continue to use the sales data that we've used previously in the other tutorials. Please also make sure that you're using the paid version of ChatGPT. Please also make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel and keep up to date with all our latest content. But having said all of that, let's jump into the tutorial. I will see you there. Welcome to this tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can create some graphical visualizations of our data. So, so far in the series of tutorials, we've been focused on just tables of data, but here we're going to look at a few graphs. Okay, so let's start off the way that we normally do it. We've got our data sheet here. So we're just going to tell it to load the file and we're going to list the fields. And as I've said before, if you've been going through the other tutorials, you'll be quite used to this technique of just starting off the tutorial by loading it into ChatGPT. Also, please note at times I may fast forward through certain of the parts when it's doing the analysis, so I might speed up the videos. Okay, but we've got a list of our different fields. And as I say, if you've been watching our previous tutorials, you'll be quite used to that set of fields that we've been working with in our sales data. So as I say, this time around, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create some graphical views. So let's start off with a column graph. So let's just say we want to tell this to create a column graph. And we wanted to have our total sales. And we're going to say by our different regions. Okay, so just create a column graph, total sales by region. So there we go. It's actually created our column graph for us. We've got our total sales of the y axis. On the x axis, we've got our different regions. And as you can see, we've got our columns. And we actually got a title for this as well. So let's say we want to make this a little bit more sophisticated. So let's say we want to add some data labels to this. So let's just say add data labels to the graph. So there we go. We've now got our data labels. We've got the actual values for each of the regions. Let's say, for example, we wanted to create a legend and we wanted to use our product category as a legend. So let's say add product category as a legend to the graph. And there we go. We've now got the product category. And what it's done is it's created a stacked column graph for me, which is actually probably the graph type I would like to use when I'm showing these values. So you're able to see what each product category is contributing to the total of the region. But we've got the different colored greens there. It's actually not that easy to read the different data values on some of the darker greens. So let's say we want to actually change the colors of the legend. Let's say change the colors of the legend. And what we're going to use is a light blue, an orange, and light green. Let's see if it can interpret that and add that to our graph. And there we go. That's a much easier graph to read with those new colors. And as you've probably seen in previous tutorials, is if we wanted to now take that, we could actually tell it to export the graph as an image and it will now create a downloadable link where we could take that graph and use it as in our presentations if we wanted to. Okay, so there we go and now we'll create and basically you just go across this and you can click on the download file and you will get that image. Let's move on to a line graph. So a line graph is really useful when you want to see how values change over time. Because normally you want to understand what is your trends. Is your trend going upwards? Is it going downwards? Is it consistent? Is it volatile? Normally you want to understand your trends and a line graph is a good way of understanding this over time. So let's tell it we want to see a line graph. And let's say we're going to display the sales by year and month. 
Okay, so there we go. We've now got a line graph. Again, we've got our values on the y-axis here, and you can see that we're going up and down in terms of our sales by year and month. Now, one of the things I might want to do is to see if we could get this calculator forecast. So what if I wanted to see what the next six months would be in terms of forecasted sales from the values it's got? So let's ask it and say add a forecast for the next six months to the graph. And again, as I've said quite a lot throughout these tutorials, is please think of your own ideas. Think of what you would maybe want to ask of these questions. Basically, this may work, it may not work, I'm not sure, but it's worth asking and seeing if ChatGPT will actually figure this out and be able to create the forecast. Okay, so there we go. It actually did figure out the forecast, and we can see now that it's actually created the forecasted sales, and it's calculated that. And here it gives us an explanation of how it's come up with the calculation, saying it's using exponential smoothing, and it's depicted by the red dashed line. So that's actually pretty impressive. As I say, you maybe come up with some new ideas of what you might want to throw at this in terms of trends and ideas around that. But I just wanted to show that something like the full cost could actually be put in and does come up with the calculation. The last type of graph that we're going to look at in this tutorial is we're going to look at a pie graph. And when you're doing pie graphs, number one, you should always be displaying percentages. So we're going to tell it to display the percentages because that's what a pie graph should do. Also, number two, never have too many values on a pie graph. So once you start going over five or six values, pie graphs quickly become, well, difficult to understand and to read. So we're going to use the product category, which only has three values. So we're just going to tell it to create a pie graph. And we're going to tell it to display the total sales by product category and let's put it as a percentage. So we'll specify as a percentage. We could have left percentage off and seen if it had put percentage in there by default, but we'll put it there to begin with. So there we go, we've got a pie graph. And as you can see, it is showing me the data labels of each of the product categories, and it does have the percentages as well. So that's pretty much perfect. That's probably exactly what I would want to see. So there we go. There's just some brief explanations of some basic graphs that you can do using ChatGPT. You can probably come up with a lot more ideas of things that you might want to test and to try with this. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of some of the case studies of what you could do. But I'm going to conclude the tutorial there and I hope to see you in the next one.